What a great day for fishing, I am going to sit back, relax and try my best to not get owned by a sweaty galleon. You're parked on an island, minding your own business. Then suddenly, you see a ship approaching. Are you kidding me? How can you read an advancing ship? What could their intentions be? And what should you do to be prepared for battle or a tactical escape? I've gathered the top 6 things to look out for when sailing or parked on an island, so you can increase your chances of keeping your flag up high. Fuzzy here, bringing you honest guides and gameplays. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Number 1. There's always an imposter among us. Ships sailing close by, by doing absolutely nothing, are what you need to be aware of most of the time. See, if someone is aiming cannons at you, you're already aware that an attack is about to happen. So you'll react accordingly or probably panic. But these ones are coming for a sneak attack. Usually, two outcomes are possible. First, they would hide on your ship until you complete the quest so they could kill you and steal the loot. Second, they could be simply coming to kill you and crash your ship, just because they can, with the occasional gunpowder barrel delivery. So never think, Oh, how nice, a ship minding its own business, unbelievable. The first thing you do is nothing. Literally, stop everything you're doing, get back to your ship, stop background music, turn up sound effects, and listen. That is all the intel you need to know what they are up to. Locate their mermaid or swimming sounds and react accordingly. On rare occasions, someone would board and say, Hello, we are friendly. But that could be the introduction to betrayal, because they knew that you saw them coming. I usually hide behind the edge of my own ship so they can think it's empty and have better freedom to camera control. So use your instinct to measure the trust meter and social distance at all times because the blunderbuss hurts. Of course, if you choose to panic, you can just drop sails and guard ladders as you sail away. Number 2. Cosmetics And I'm not referring to what sails they have on, but actually, how did they unlock the sails that they have equipped? By understanding the origin of the most popular sails and what it takes to unlock them, you can know what that crew or at least one of their members is capable of. For example, some of the more accessible sails to unlock are sails of the Ashen Dragon by simply completing the Seabound Soul Tall Tale Fire and Ash Commendation. This gives you an estimate of how long the player has sailed the seas. However, spotting sails like the Ghost Captain sails heading towards you will let you know that this is a much more experienced crew than the Ashen Dragon one. It doesn't mean they are PvP lords, it just means they have spent much longer sailing the seas, making them a more significant threat. I have created a video with the hardest sails to unlock that will give you a great insight on what to be wary of. You'll find it in the description below. Of course, these are the common impressions of a ship. It doesn't mean that an experienced player won't be rocking the default sails to confuse your mind. Number 3. Ship presence and approach give you a lot of information about their intentions. For example, some movements indicate a potential attack, like slowly raising sails while getting you on their broadside. Slower speed usually means a chain shot is about to smack, to proceed with the cannonballs and boarding after. Others suggest a much less experienced crew, for example, those beelining towards you from broadside, keeping you out of their cannon range and being entirely vulnerable for yours. And for better reading, even if you don't have an emissary raised, always have a flag on your ship. This gives you the ability to know wind direction at any moment in time without being on your ship to see wind trails. Just look at the nearest flag and see if their sails are angled by comparing them to your compass, as flag directions simulate the wind. You'd be surprised how many ships have sailed at lower speeds, especially galleons. That indicates a crew overwhelmed by their ship size and not keeping up with sails, length, and angle. With this type of information, you can know how to counterattack. For example, overwhelmed crews only require firebombs to make their life a living hell. If they can't keep up with the sails, they will barely keep up with putting out the fire. But spotting an efficient crew would probably give you a head start, so you can relocate and use strategies against larger ships like floating kegs or cannon towers. Number 4. The wind direction defines the course of battle and what to plan next depending on the opposing ship types. Smaller ships are faster against the wind with flat angled sails. Larger ships are faster with the wind at full bellow. Let's say you see a brigantine approaching your sloop and you are not prepared to fight yet, as you need a minute or two to readjust and hopefully board them after securing your ship. Your heading should be related to wind direction. Suppose your second step is to attempt boarding them to gather information about their crew and what weapons they're carrying, in that case, 
The first step should be adjusting your heading against the wind, then boarding them. As if you fail that attempt, your ship will still be safe when you return from the ferry as it's faster than they can reach you, keeping your sloop at a safe distance. I've seen ships instantly panic and drop sails regardless of wind direction, hoping that they would get away. Keep in mind, if you sail away with the wind, against a larger ship, you are actually getting closer to them. Since they are naturally faster than you, they will be rolling on the deck laughing by the time you get back from the ferry. If your plan is to counterattack, nothing is better than pretending to be unaware of them and performing what I call the silent sails strategy, dangerously effective around islands. I've got a nice video covering silent sails in detail linked in the description. Number 5. Harpoon turns are game changers for sudden broadside attacks to extreme maneuvers. Obviously, most of us know that you can harpoon turn from a rock or a nearby island or even sea floors. But there is much more to that. Shipwrecks, for example, are something I've rarely seen anyone use to harpoon turn. They are incredibly unexpected by the enemy and could put you at an advantage in an instant. Especially that they can't be easily spotted by the enemy chasing you. But that's not all. As mentioned, some of us use the seafloor to harpoon turn. But understanding the region you are in gives you a much more significant advantage. For example, Shores of Plenty has some of the deepest sea floors that even close to the rocky sides of islands you cannot reach the bottom, as shown here. However, in areas like the wilds, rocky or not, almost every side of every island is a shallow floor that you can harpoon turn from. With this information in mind, your maneuvers and strategies should be adjusted based on the region you are in. 6. Before portals, you would see a birth of a reaper emissary on the map, then watch them grow to become level 5, all strong and ready to fight you. During that time, if you were an emissary, you probably would plan ahead and watch their levels go up safely. As then, when they are reaper 5 and can see all emissaries on the map, you can probably sell what you have or even better, take them down and sell their flag. But now, with portals, ships can pop out of these places as a level 5 coming to attack you, cancelling all previous 4 levels as they were gained on another server out of your knowledge. This speaks for itself. Occasional map checks as it can escalate from 0 to 100 in 1 second. Or maybe you can raise an emissary only because they are on the server and you know they want to fight. Then bait them to a creative trap that you have built. For example, Placing a reaper bounty chest in front of the dam to make them think you just completed it, giving them false hope and a warm hug in return. It's a sandbox game, after all, Things to look out for are endless. If you subscribe, I'll be happy. And my channel will be happy too. It's as simple as that. These are the top 6 I use to keep my ship afloat and take down enemies with style. I'm sure there's more that you got. So please leave a comment below and share your adventure. Fuzzy here. Thank you for watching and happy sailing. Please subscribe so I can go fishing again.